I just want us to appreciate the name of the Lord. If you want to lie down, you can lie down on the floor. If you want to kneel, you can kneel on the floor. Ah, shaka bara dala te, bara tia do shala bara dala da, de kabara seriya do shala da. Ah, jana na 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 ma, bara seriya do shala da ra, ri kabara niya do shala da bala da da da. Ina na na ma na 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 na, shaka bara seriya do shala, jana na 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 na, ma na 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 kaba, re bariya do shaka bara da ra. Na 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 na, shalia do shalade na. Ah, kabara seke bele dia do shalade. E kabarandi kado sha. Re ma na 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 sha kabara da. Re kabalande ko shalade dia do sha. E ne 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 kabala dia do sha. Manda pra ra kaza la kabara. De para seke dehera. De 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 bo sha na. Ah. Meloni kinro, ninu oreti baba she. Meloni kinro, ninu oreti jesu she. Ah, Meloni kinro, ninu oreti baba she. Akabala, Meloni kinro. Ninu ore ti Jesus, akabalada ore ema bo ojuro yokuno meloni kinyo afiki shama tuta ah ore ema bo ojuro yokuno. Belonging <laughs> Umalite na fudu, na kadi na si ibu chile, ije bube, ije bube, kabala dale kabala da, ibu afa na omega. Jehovah. To worship the Lord, my provider. Hey, my provider, my provider, my provider. Hey, my 
My helper, my helper, my helper is our helper. Every knee is a my helper. My helper, my helper. My up, 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 You are the living God. Is there no one like you? You are the living God. Is there no one like you? You are the living God. Ah, is there no one like you? You are the living God. Yes, no one like Motiva, ah, Motiva, no, ah, Alleluia, Alleluia, ah, Motiva. Worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Alleluia. Alleluia. Akabala da la ba. Alleluia. Motive ba. Motive ba. Aya. Motive ba. Alleluia. We call a balada. Alleluia. Glory, 
Sorry, King Shego Koyo. Gloria, Baba. Sorry, King Shego Koyo. Gloria, Baba. Sorry, King Shego Koyo. Gloria, Baba. Sorry, King Shego Koyo. I just want you to stretch forth your hands to the Lord. Manakabaladada. I want you to stretch forth those hands to the Lord. And I want you to begin to declare that everything that seems impossible in my life, it becomes possible right now. The Lord is about to transform someone's life this evening. Janakabaladija. Come on. I want us to have that belief in Christ. I want us to have that belief in Christ. Mana sheka barada da 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 ba sheka bara. Ina na mana sheka barandi ya do shelede. Mandra ka baras kelede bede. Ibrando sheka barandi kuvelede. Jene ne ne mana kasi ya da 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 bara.
The Bible says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. The word tempt there means to test. You know, the Bible makes us understand God doesn't tempt any man. The man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. So this Bible scripture is saying, God tested Abraham and said unto him, Behold, okay. And he said, Behold, here I am, sorry. And he said, Take now thy son. Thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass without telling his wife, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, so we saw that they went on a journey, somebody with me, and three days after, the Bible says Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Now, you know, let me go ahead of myself. 
where I'm going to is majorly verse 15. But okay, let's 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 just go. We know the story, right? It's a popular story. Let's go to verse. Let's go to verse 4 and 5. Okay, we have read verse 4. He said then, okay, verse 5 now. And Abraham did what? He said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I am the I and the Lord will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So we are seeing something very private out here. You know, in theology, there's something called the law of first mention. Whenever you want to understand the meaning of a context or a concept, sorry, you have to look for the first place that concept was first used in the scripture. Is somebody getting the message? Now, we are seeing this is the first time the word worship is used in the Bible. And then we see it in relation to the story of Abraham. I hope you are getting the message. So the Bible says God told Abraham to go somewhere and offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. But what Abraham is teaching us that what he was going to do on that mountain where God has sent first sacrifice was called worship. Is somebody getting my message? So worship is not just the songs that you sing. Worship is actually a sacrifice. Are you getting what I'm trying to explain? And now we are seeing here that, you know, he took Isaac and then took all of the things they were going to need for the sacrifice and then he went. And imagine this. If somebody was going to worship and yet went on a three-day journey just because he wanted to worship. Is somebody in church? And then we are saying something very important about worship that I want you to get this evening. The Bible says, there in verse 5 again. He said what? And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. Are you seeing that? Now, what do we learn regarding this as touching to worship? Worship is not a place in quote for multitude. Are you getting my message? Abraham was going to worship, but then he had to tell everyone. You know, the minister GUC got it very right when he sang the song. Um, I, I believe you don't understand the song now. I will make room for two, just me and you. You know, that is what worship is all about. You can be in the midst of a congregation and yet you are not worshiping. You can be lifting up songs. You can be lifting up holy hands and you are not still worshiping. One of the things that qualify what you are doing as worship is there must be that even though you are in the midst of the multitude, you must sustain the posture of the secret place. Are you getting my message? That's what we are seeing here. He wanted to go and worship, but he knew that the place I'm going to, I don't need people that because in the place of worship, many things happen. And I believe that's what we call today's service, why we worship. What are the things that happen when people worship? In the place of worship, men receive instruction. In the place of worship, men receive direction. That is not the place you go to with the multitude. You will get distracted. Is somebody getting my message? You must ensure your focus is, you, the Bible says, and I have set my face as a flint. Your face is focused to hear what God has to say. That is what we call worship. And then we are seeing that he said he and the what? And the young lad will go to the place to do what? To worship. Remember in this context, Isaac was the sacrifice. Are you in church? So you don't now start saying, that, okay, where is the sacrifice I'm carrying? But then you now understand that in the new, we are New Testament believers in this place, am I correct? We understand that in the New Testament, the Bible makes us understand that the sacrifice is not just carrying physical things, but then your body has become the living sacrifice. So when you are going to the place of worship, the sacrifice that you offer is what? Is your body beyond the songs. Oh, Jesus, my Jesus. Are you in church this evening? So worship is not, it has little to do with the songs. It has more to do with the posture you are sustaining. What posture have you chosen to take? It doesn't, we, I hope you know you can worship without lifting up any song. We can just be in this place and then I just tell them to just play sounds. And then we are just there and then you have traveled far in the place of worship. I hope you are getting my message. So it's not, we are learning what worship is contextually from the law of first mention. It's not first the songs you sing. In fact, Abraham did not even sing any song. But yet, that was the man that first worshipped according to this context. Are you getting the message? Number one thing I taught you is what? Worship is a what? It's a sacrifice. And then when you are going to the place of worship, it's not the place of what? Of multitude. You must ensure. So while you are in church here, yeah. and then I love, you know, all of the atmosphere, the sound and everything just to help you. But you must ensure that it's really you and God that meet in that place. If you really don't meet with him, then you never worshipped. Because when you check the real meaning of worship, the word there means to prostrate. It means to pay homage. And then the context of homage means, you know, you are recognizing the authority and then the supremacy of a being. 
are you in church? So if people can be standing up, yet they are lost paying homage to Jesus Christ. And somebody might be kneeling down, prostrating, yet he's not paying any homage. Oh. Somebody in church. I want you to worship correctly this evening. And you know, the atmosphere that we are in right now is not an atmosphere of too many songs. I hope you are getting my message. Really, is really not. I believe so strongly that God wants you to experience what worship is all about. That's why he tagged this service, Why We Worship. W-H-I-N-E. What happens when people worship? It's only God. That, the Bible says it got to a point when if, um, 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 Solomon, after he built the temple, and then he offered 1,000 um, um, bulls for what? For sacrifice. The Bible says, and they began to worship. And what happened? The Bible says the temple was filled with the presence of God that the ministers could not even minister. Until you get to that point whereby there's no even song to sing. But the Holy Spirit is the one finding expression in the atmosphere who have really not worshipped. Until you get to that point whereby you are really lost and there are no words to say. And you are just there, Lord, saying, Over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Let only you be seen. Let only you be seen. We say over our lives, oh Yahweh. Over our lives, oh Yahweh. Let only you be seen. Let only you be praised. Over our lives, oh take out ample time to worship but i hope you are getting my message what i'm trying to do is to set the atmosphere right so by the time we are now diving deep into that atmosphere to really worship you are you are going to just be there you know at that point we are going to go stretch nobody's going to stop you just offer your songs offer your sound and then let god take all the glory somebody with me now we are still learning the context of worship so we understand that abraham said let me go with what with the sacrifice to the place to do what to worship and then we understand in the New Testament faith that what the sacrifice is your own body. And this is the major thing you must understand about the sacrifice. In the New Testament, the sacrifice is not to be dead. The sacrifice has to be living. Are you getting the message? He said, offer your body as it. I hope you know, <laughs> it's easier to offer a sacrifice that is dead than to offer a sacrifice that is living. Take for example, you are trying to offer a goat. You want to roast the goat. Is somebody with me? And the goat is alive. You know, you get the message. And then you put the fire there. Because on the altar, there has to be the fire. If you read the context well, it went to the wood. It went with everything that was going to set up the fire. Imagine you are setting the fire on a live goat. I hope you know the pain is much more than setting it on a dead goat. And the Bible is telling you that that is what we call worship. When you come to the place of worship, what happens there is one of the first things that really happens is a pruning. And then the real way you know you are worshiping is that something must happen to your mortal body. Are you getting my message? This is why, you know, and this is where you now see some of those physical, you know, effects. Where people say they have goosebumps and all of those things. You have heard people say all of these kind of things. Something must really happen to your physical body to show that you truly worship. Am I saying the worship is a feeling? That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there's going to be this burning, you know. Them, I, use, I hope I'm doing my best to explain these things. This is what we call worship. That body must be living. And in that place, this is why it's hard for somebody to tell me you genuinely worship God and the man can finish worshiping God and go back into sin. It's really very difficult. Because in the place of worship, one of the things we understand that is the symbol of worship is that the sacrifice is living. And then the fire must prune. The fire must burn everything that is not of God. It must burn everything that is a chaff. I can't come to the place of worship with anger, with malice and with envy and go out with that same malice and envy. You really did not worship. How you know you worship that something must happen to that anger? Do I have genuine people in this place? That when you really worship, you know that ah, even if you have been fighting somebody since, God will just be telling your guy, you better say to look. Right now, I'm angry with the workforce. And they know already. And we're going to meet after the meeting. But then in the place of worship, I can't carry it there. Are you getting what I'm trying to explain? This is what we call worship. 
in that place something must happen everything that is not of God that is the seed must die and that one doesn't die by the songs you sing it dies by the spirit the presence of the spirit that is around in that atmosphere and then it can begin to touch you that's why you see people now begin to cry this crying the tears and all of those things are just physical effects to show that really something is happening in the place of worship I've been to worship meetings for many of you that used to join us when we used to do our videos then. Thursday videos. There are times we start videos around 9, finish around 5. And what are we doing? We, there, there was one video we did at Pastor Tobas Church. It was just one song we sang from 9 o'clock to 5 p.m. Sorry, from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. One song. I, how many of you were around that day? How huh? many of you were not around? Wow. One song that we sang from the beginning to the end. And people were crying. I myself was in tears. Because as you are repeating the song, as you are repeating the sound, the Lord is telling you that this thing, there's something somewhere in your heart. You better let me fix it. Nobody knows the man like the spirit of the man that is in that man. The same way no one knows God like the spirit of God that is in God. So how that you, you now have the spirit of God inside of you that now helps you to, oh my Jesus. I hope, you are, I hope I'm not talking too much. But you are getting the message. This is what you have come to do in this place. That's why it's called Why Do We Worship. I'm not going to sing too many songs. I'm just going to be telling you some of the songs that the Lord gave me in the place of prayer during the course of the week. But then the whole, the whole agenda is that let something really touch you. I beg you. Let, and when I mean something, let the Holy Spirit himself touch you. Let it not be Pastor Samson. Let it not just be the songs. Let it not be the sound. Let it not be the anything. Let it be that truly you met with the Spirit of the living God. Is that this place men come back with things that are tangible? Look at Abraham. <laughs> oh my, let me not go ahead of myself. But you are getting the message. And then the Bible makes us understand when he now went to the sacrifice and then he was about to offer. And Isaac had the, asked a very powerful question. Isaac said, Father, I've seen the wood, I've seen the fire, I've seen the knife. Where is the sacrifice? Where is the lamb? You know what Abraham response was? He says, Let's, don't worry. The God that provided every other thing will provide the sacrifice. Now, this is, you know, when I read this scripture, I, I, and I really must meet Isaac when I get to heaven, there are some questions I must ask him. How come after what happened here, you never hated your father? How many of you have thought to ask yourself that question? Your father tied you, put you on a wood, about to burn you alive, and yet you still kept on? There's something Abraham must have touched. That kind of honor can only come because God placed it on a man. Many of you will hate your father direct. Am I lying? I'm saying what you will say this man wanted to kill me. And yes, what Abraham called that thing is called worship. And then we are seeing in that place that while he was about to do what? To kill Isaac, the Bible says the angel of the Lord spoke and said, Abraham, wait. Now I know that you truly love me. So we are see don't forget what did Abraham go and do there? What did he go and do there? I want to hear you. What did he go and do there? And what was the response of the angel? Let's read the response of the angel. That's in verse, verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said what? Called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that what? Thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. What did Abraham go and do at that mountain? And what was the angel's response? Oh, let's, let's pick up now. Don't, don't leave me now. What did Abraham go and do at the mountain? And what was the response of the angel? Now I know that you fear me. So we are seeing that there is a relationship between genuine worship and then the fear of the Lord. One of the ways that God can know that this person genuinely fears him is when men truly offer genuine worship unto him. Are you in church? a strong atmosphere here. Believe me, I want to sing, but I'm not even finding song to sing. But the hand of the Lord is mighty. How many of you are sensing what I'm saying? <laughs> Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our God. Eternity is Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our God. Eternity is over the King. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up with a 
And then the Bible says that what? And Abraham called the name, okay, verse 13. And Abraham now lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him what? A ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place what? Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, now, when you check the meaning of the word Jehovah Jireh there, the word Jehovah Jireh is the word, it means Jehovah we see to it. Now, what does this mean? It means that the place of worship is where you encounter God what as Jehovah Jireh. Are you getting my mind? I hope you are seeing I'm not bringing anything out of context here. We are still examining the context. The very first thing we saw that what worship is what is not a place for, where, for multitude. We understand again that worship what is sacrifice. And then we see also from the story of Abraham again that in the place of worship, men receive direction. Abraham was told to kill Isaac first of all. But on getting there, the direction and the instruction changed. I hope you know. If Abraham was not sensitive enough, oh, are, are you now getting why I say it's not a place of multitude? If he had gone with the other people, I hope you know his hearing might have been hazy. God is trying to say, don't kill, don't kill, don't kill. And the other guys are saying, oh God, what are you trying to do? And before you know, a mistake happens, Isaac is dead. And Abraham said, God, you killed him. And if God said, I told you not to kill him. This is what happened to many people in the place of worship. Because you are not, you are not, you are not focused enough. You are not gazing enough. There are instructions and directions that comes in the place of worship. So while men worship, one of the things that happen is what? Is that men receive instruction. Men receive direction. Because at that point of worship, do you really know what worship is all about? Worship means you are paying homage. You are recognizing your frailty and saying that I'm not sufficient enough. Lord, show up. Are you getting the message? I hope in all of the book of Psalms that you read was songs written by, by, by David. And one of the assignments that I have, you might not understand these things, but you know, I know there's a strong connection between myself and David. You know, I, I might not be able to explain these things, but time will prove these things. And this is why most of the time you see the songs that I sing, I bring a whole lot of Psalms into it. And there's a song the Lord still gave me during the course of the week. It was purely Psalm 23. 